Shalom, and welcome to another edition of Q&A with Pastor Scott Belain, where we try to answer your biblical questions in 10 minutes or less. I'm Pastor Scott Belain with Holy Impact Ministries, and our selected question of the day is, are we saved by grace through faith? This particular question is a question that is truly near and dear to my heart. Today's modern-day version of Christianity has completely missed the mark in answering this tectonically important question. Are we saved by grace through faith? I dare say that I've heard few pastors, priests, bishops, and absolutely no popes answer this question correctly according to our God-breathed scripture. With that being said, I'd like to invite you to come with me as we journey through what our God-breathed scripture truly says about being saved by grace through faith. Let's start with Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Again, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is a gift from God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, we are indeed saved by grace through faith. And it is not by our own doing. It is indeed a gift from God. And according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9, our salvation is not a result of work so that no one may boast. Many pastors, priests, bishops, and popes will wrongly preach and teach that because we are saved by grace through faith, their version of Jesus did it all for them at the cross, and therefore, do as thou wilt is now the whole of the law which I might mention comes directly from the devil's Bible itself. And yet, this is what they wrongly preach and teach, not only to us, but to our children and to our children's children. The first thing that we need to understand is what faith is. What is faith according to our God-breathed scripture? I would submit to you that faith is an action word. Faith produces works. James chapter 2, verses 17 through 19. Again, James chapter 2, verses 17 through 19 says this, So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Not says I, but says our very own God-breathed scripture. And even the demons believe. Does this make them saved as well? James, the half-brother of our Messiah and the head of the Jerusalem council, tells us very clearly that a person is not justified by faith alone. James chapter 2, verses 24 through 26. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. You see, my friends, faith fuels works. And although we are not saved by our works, this does not negate our good works. Many pastors, priests, bishops, and popes will wrongly teach and preach that the Apostle Paul preached against the law of God. I can assure you, my friends, that nothing could be farther from the truth. Did the Apostle Paul himself live in obedience to the law of God himself? According to Scripture and according to James, who was the head of the Jerusalem council, and the elders in Jerusalem. Paul did indeed live in obedience to the law of God. Acts chapter 21, verses 18 through 24. Do therefore what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take these men and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses, so that they may shave their heads. Thus, all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourself also live in observance of the law. The Apostle Paul had gotten himself into a little bit of a hot spot because of his style of preaching. 
And James and the elders at Jerusalem were keenly aware of the trouble that the Apostle Paul had gotten himself into with many of the Jewish people, who James clearly tells us in Acts chapter 21, verse 20, have believed in the Messiah. James and the elders at Jerusalem therefore command Paul to take these four men who were under a Nazarite vow to the temple and to pay for their expenses according to the law of God. To better understand what a Nazarite vow is and what expenses Paul had to pay for, you can visit Numbers chapter 6 in the Old Testament. Did the Apostle Paul preach and teach against the law of God? Here are just some of the things that the Apostle Paul taught and preached about concerning the law of God. Romans 2.13, Paul says, For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. Romans chapter 3, verse 31, Paul asks that all-important question. Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? Paul says, by no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, Paul says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul says, by no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Romans chapter 7, verse 12, Paul says, The law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Romans chapter 8, verses 7 and 8 says, For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it can't. So Paul says, Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Why? Because they do not submit to God's law. Romans chapter 8, verse 2, Paul says, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in the Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, from the law of sin and death. What was the law of sin and death? The law of sin and death was the penalty of the law, not the law, my friends. Are we saved by grace through faith? The answer to that question is an unequivocal yes. We are indeed saved by grace through faith. And it is because we are saved by grace through faith that we love God and keep his commandments. 1 John 5, 2, and 3. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. We keep the law of God not in order to be saved, but because we are saved. According to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33 in the Old Testament, and again in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16 in the New Testament, the law of God is written on the hearts and in the minds of his people. And if you think it's okay to return to your sin like a dog to its vomit or like a pig to its mire, you need to go read Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 through 31, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 6, and Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20, and John chapter 12, verses 49 and 50, and the rest of your Bible, for that matter. Now, go read your Bible from the beginning to the end, and not from the middle to the end. You'll be glad you did. Shalom, everyone.